Let's move over to this now. The election of Banyazali Sufi as Gauteng Premier came with some changes to provincial government. Jacob Mamabolo is now finance MEC, which now means he's involved in deciding the future of ETOLs. Well, the MEC joins me this morning in studio and talks to us about what lies ahead for the system that has plagued the province for a number of years now, MEC. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning. And, of course, congratulations on your, on your new role. No doubt a very difficult one. But uh, the Premier indicated in his speech that you are being tasked to come up with a plan to get rid of the system that's been complained about for a number of years now. Have you got a sense of what that plan is going to look like, the measures that you're going to have to take and the stakeholders that will be involved? Firstly, uh, good morning <clears throat> to you and, of course, to all the viewers. <clears throat> Let me thank you for inviting us and, uh, of course, for your congr congratulatory um, um, remarks. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, just for the benefit of the viewers, let me confirm that indeed uh, <clears throat> the Premier of our province, Honorable Panyaza Li Sufi, in announcing strategic policy imperatives, um, has actually indicated, and I think was even much more clearer, mm. that um, we need to reposition our fiscal instruments and he spoke about revenue and uh, new sources of revenue um, so that we can take forward our very principled and correct uh, position for the complete scrapping of um, the e tolling system. And to that extent, I'd like to reaffirm that position mm -hmm. that um, the announcement made by the Premier is actually to take forward that struggle because... We believe uh, we must bring relief to the residents of our province once and for all. And uh, to that extent, uh, we're looking forward. Again, we must reaffirm our position that uh, this matter is in the hands of national government. We're looking forward to them making an announcement. But in the meantime, uh, we're looking at particularly consolidating a revenue collection plan, making our revenue system to be efficient, mm -hmm. but also making sure that... Um, you know, we can be able to protect uh, other critical areas of service delivery so that whatever that comes with an announcement, our fiscal environment is ready to attend to that. Mm -hmm. So just to give us uh, some clarity around this plan that the Premier has now tasked you with, are you waiting for guidance from National Treasury be before you can continue on with developing a plan or are you working with National Treasury to develop that plan? I think it's important just as a background to say that um, we as a province had made a comprehensive submission to national government mm -hmm. even a few years back. <clears throat> so we have always worked with national government. We've also understood that um, the contractual uh, partnership agreements and obligations are sitting with national government, Sandral in particular. So secondly, yes, the announcement by national government is very much important. Mm -hmm. But as Premier has announced, side by side with that, we are, um, you know, designing a plan that will make sure that um, uh, we are well positioned in terms of our finances to be able to ensure the total scrapping of uh, it all. So we're doing all that together, but our legitimate expectation is that it all should be scrapped and be scrapped as a matter of agency, and that is why we shouldn't be waiting. Uh, we should be making sure that... Um, you know, our environment is prepared. And that's what the plan is about, mm. to look at where will we get money from and how will we make sure that uh, in so doing, we don't bring new pressures on the, on the, on the residents of our province. So that's what the, the plan entails. But at the end of it all, we need to make sure that uh, the residents of Gauteng can, you know, be relieved of this unfair bed and play squarely on them on roads that are used by everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so that um, they can actually get, again, in their host households, small, medium, micro enterprises. We need to give them money back into their households, into their companies, as a result of this very unjust uh, burden that is placed on them. Right. And now, 
are there any time frames that you are looking at? Because we are uh, fast on the road to 2024. So the Premier and his team, which includes yourself, is limited in terms of achievements. And I ask this, MEC, because Sanral released their financial results a few days ago, or was it a day ago? And they're saying that they've got a huge set of bottlenecks. And one of the issues that have been, re that have been uh, a part of these bottlenecks in terms of them fulfilling their infrastructure uh, commitments is the ETOL issue. So I ask the issue around time frames just because of the constraints that it's had not only on residents of the province but also on Sanral in terms of fulfilling its obligations uh, in terms of infrastructure. Well, uh, let me say that uh, the Premier has clearly said that we need to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. There's no time and we clearly understand this. So from our side as a department, as provincial treasury, uh, we remember the announcement was made just uh, on Friday. Three days ago, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so on Monday and Tuesday, we held a meeting with the top management of the department to look particularly at this matter. So as far as time is concerned, uh, I think the, the point I can make to the viewers is that time is of the essence. Mm. We need to do this and do it now. But um, we are not starting afresh. I was privileged when I was MEC of Transport to have chaired a committee that packaged the different alternative but very, uh, what we believe, very efficient and sustainable sources of revenue. So it's not like we're going to start afresh. Yes. What we need to do is to consolidate those and again engage with national government to say, uh, and, and let me also say to them, in the, in the presentation we've made to national government, we had also, you know, underlined the principle that as a province we are willing to make a financial contribution. So, so it's not like we're going to start afresh, mm. but time is of the essence. And uh, you will know that um, as MEC of Finance, I have the privilege of tabling the mini budget uh, policy statement uh, towards end of uh, November. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will provide uh, some of the details there. We are looking forward to the um, medium term uh, uh, budget policy statement of the minister next week, mm -hmm. uh, Minister of Finance. So the two platforms um, are going to even provide much more needed clarity and detail on time uh, and on just uh, how quick we can be able to say uh, our fiscal environment is well repositioned to be able to make sure that the hanging decker on the households, on businesses, on yeah. vulnerable on our province is removed. Mm. Because really it was, it was conceptually wrong from the beginning mm. to take national roads that serves everybody, the country, neighboring states, and, and linking us with the global economy. When it comes to usage, we all use. When it comes to payment, it's only the people of Gauteng. So conceptually, from the beginning, this was a flawed project. Uh, even the way they did their risk analysis, it was completely wrong. I don't think they thought quite deeply about how to do risk. So from that point of view, uh, as far as we are concerned, um, and we have already announced this publicly, that the e-tolls are not part of the future of the province. And that's why Premier has emphasized that urgently we need a concrete plan in rents and cents of how much will we bring to the table to relieve the people of our province so that once and for all they do not have to worry about e-tolls and this thing is laid to rest. But national government should really make the announcement this has been hanging for far too long and we believe efficient governance requires that there be clarity, consistency, mm -hmm. and things hanging on air, back and forth, moving in circles, don't bring the required level of confidence in terms of governance. So for efficient and effective governance, we need stability, we need consistency, we need transparency, we need accountability, but at most, certainty is very important. Yeah, certain, certainty is very important indeed, MEC. And I'm glad you bring up the committee that you were part of when you were transport MEC, because it did give details around the way forward on uh, the e-tolls and the revenue streams or the alternative revenue streams Absolutely. that would come about then. Why was it then in that moment in that instance that there wasn't a movement forward based on that committee and the details that it had derived on the alternative revenue streams why was there not movement at that time um, could you tell us what the bottlenecks or the pushback could have been then that we didn't see any forward movement on that 
Look, uh, I mean, if you just look at the, at the fiscal environment in which we work, um, we, we, we would, uh, you know, concede that perhaps the matter yeah. was not as easy as that. Mm. Um, there are complex contractual obligations here. Um, infrastructure funding and the triple uh, P partnerships models, uh, public-private partnership models, yeah. uh, requires that we also don't send a wrong message about how we manage uh, projects of this magnitude and scale. So maybe to, to a certain extent, people were still uh, doing what is called applying your mind. Yes. But for us as a province, we had long crossed that because we had even sourced the skills of the most uh, knowledgeable people in, 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 insofar as financial modeling is concerned to say to us, this different and various mul uh, multiple sources of revenue, including provincial contribution, are they workable? So to that extent, we, we, we had long settled that issue, but we had to respect the principle of uh, spheres of government, we are one unitary state, mm -hmm. and we had to allow national government to apply their mind to the issue. And, uh, but time is of the essence. And this matter continue to hoover up our heads, yes. doesn't instill much confidence. But I think we're reaching a critical stage. For the Premier to say, look at sources of revenue, look at efficiency of revenue uh, systems, it tells you that perhaps we are no longer where we were. And that's why as a province we're repositioning our fiscal tools so that we can be able to deal with any imminent announcement that can be made. Mm -hmm. And then as a final note, MEC, when you look at these revenue streams and the fiscal framework that you will now be developing, can you assure Gauteng residents that you will be able to meet the debt obligations that are associated with the ETOLs and their building? Can you give them assurance that it won't result in further taxes in various other ways um, or any kind of payments that residents would have to make to subsidize what the province is willing to contribute from its own budget? So, uh, so I think the, con the, the assurance we need to give is at two levels. Mm -hmm. One is to the residents of Houting, people we serve and the people that we are accountable to in the main. That... Uh, <laughs> We will not call for scrapping of ETOLs as a burden on their revenue and income and then introduce another one. Yes. Um, we, we won't do that. Mm -hmm. What we need is for the people of Houting to have money in their households, to participate in the economy, to boost aggregate demand, and to live a good quality of life. So we're not going to do that. Secondly, to... Um, the investment community to people that uh, finance uh, high capacity projects such as uh, you know infrastructure investments that our country is founded on the principle of the rule of law contractual obligations as you are asking must be should be will be respected the issue with the etol is and that's why we are raising revenue yeah. it's precisely because we respect the letter that wrote the agreement, mm -hmm. the paper on which that letter and agreement is written, that we're talking about generating revenues because we respect the contractual obligations in those contracts. So we would also like to assure them, but the ETOL project is also an isolated case because it was flawed from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so those who, in, who came with the ETOL, the company that implemented ETOL, and the experts got it completely wrong in terms of um, how they designed it and how they wanted it to operate. That's why it is causing so many problems. So to that extent, we'd like to assure the residents of Houting, the people that want to invest in our infrastructure projects, that we understand the rule of law, but we will not rob Peter to pay Paul. Yes. I mean, um, so that, that assurance we'd like to give to them. No, thank you very much for your time uh, this morning, MEC. That is a fine. Finance MEC uh, for Gauteng, uh, Jacob Mamabolo there, uh, giving insights on the plan that is set to be put in place uh, over the next short while because time is of the essence and of course um, how uh, Gauteng residents will be alleviated of that burden that has been looming over us for years now.